one is that we talk about technology a lot. Like we talk about the effect of technology on whatever, everything, but ultimately it's the people that matter. And that theme shows up in my research over and over again, that technology doesn't have these sort of uniform effects. Rather, we have to think about the psychology of the implementation, how the technology is being used and what context is it being used um, if we want to understand anything about it. We have to think about the particular features, like you talked about your meta glasses. Can we say anything about those glasses that applies to other kinds of augmented reality interventions or applications? Like maybe not, right? But we really have to use a psychological lens to understand when it might be true or not true. And so that that theme has showed up so many times. And I sometimes I feel like I'm falling down into a cliche, repeating myself so much about that, but it really is like the people first and the technology second is how we generate insights about technology. Yeah, 100%. You know, there's, oh my gosh, well, it shows up in a lot of things, you know, and in, in every time we start talking about AI, it's like, it's not just working on its own. It's, you know, it's, it's the people that are behind it, the people that are working with it. Uh, hopefully it stays that way. <laughs> it doesn't get, and I don't want to get too dystopian. I don't, I don't like to fall into that trap unless I'm really making hyperbole, you know, to try and try and make a point. But, but what you just talked about really came out a lot. Like when you said that the, I saw you present at a conference we both presented at, um, I think it was IPAC, but the, the work on surveillance, right. That I feel like the takeaway from that really was that kind of individual differences and individual circumstances really made a profound difference in how people saw things psychologically. Right. And we are people. So psychology applies to all of us. And when you're in the workplace, you have a lot of interesting dynamics and you throw technology in there and it can get really kooky. And I felt like that was really fascinating research as we look at psychological safety and and as devices, right? Like meta glasses or I think, I don't know if you've ever read the book, The Future of Work. I'm trying to remember the author. It's actually not a super recent book, but what they did is they had people wearing little tracker things um, all day in the, in the office environment and just kind of watched what they did and tried to draw some conclusions from that data. And, you know, I think one of the conclusions is people don't really like that very much, but um, tell us a little bit about the, you know, the, the surveillance research that you've done, kind of what those studies were and what did you find there that people would be interested in? Because this is something that's happening. Unfortunately, a lot of times when we don't even know it, hopefully not that often, but you know, it's, it's kind of shady these days sometimes. So. Yeah. Well, I try to avoid making claims like you should or should not do X, whatever X might be, and rather focus on what are the behavioral effects when you do X, right? What are the consequences? And can you live with those consequences? And right. if not, don't do that thing. Right. So in the context of tracking and monitoring, sometimes the purpose is life-saving technology, right? Like yeah. sometimes you're monitoring whether someone's been exposed to too much radiation, and that's really, really important, and you should definitely keep doing that. Or you're monitoring your eyes for signs of fatigue and you're telling a truck driver to pull over, which yeah. is, again, a life-saving technology. So I'm never going to say don't track people at work. That's not a useful statement. 